you know, Brazil is our biggest market. It represents 40% of the traffic in the region. And since the region was growing, there was a lot of expectation uh, to see a new direction for the Brazilian airport infrastructure. Uh, currently, it, was, it is managed by the Infraero, which is a Brazilian government uh, company. But uh, by the beginning of this year, the new government of Brazil uh, called for a concession of three of the major airports in Brazil, which was very, it was a news very well received by the industry. Uh, last June, finally, the airport of Guarulhos in Sao Paulo, Brasilia and Campinas uh, were given concession between 20, 25 and 30 years uh, in concession to major operators and operators with a lot of experience in airport management. So we are expecting positive uh, results from that process. Quito Airport uh, is one of the most important projects, not only in the region, uh, but across the whole world industry. Why? Because uh, you don't see very often to, to be a greenfield airport. Uh, Quito is a very good example. Uh, it, has, it has built uh, with uh, all the environmental uh, requirements to have a sustainable uh, airport. In Quito, they are a heavy producer of flowers, so there is a lot of uh, not only passenger movement, but cargo movement, traffic. So they agree to postpone the opening for, for March, but not for any reason that the construction, the construction work was not ready, or all the process of moving the, 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 the customers to the new airport were not ready, but because uh, the timing was uh, in terms of logistics uh, was not the, the right one, so uh, they agreed to establish a new day for February the 12th, uh, 2020, 2013. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, for that date, uh, all the stakeholders uh, will be ready for the opening. Airports in our region are basically scrambling to uh, build capacity to accommodate this growth. And so, you know, you've got Chang Airport um, that's um, building, um, you know, looking into a new runway, Hong Kong Airport, the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of airports are doing this and because they foresee that uh, growth will double in the next nine years. And it's been a very busy um, six months for us uh, recently. Um, as you probably know, um, ACI has signed a, uh, a few major agreements with industry partners, um, such as ICAO and uh, also Canzo. So just to touch on two priorities that we're working on um, in this region, uh, one of them is being the APEX program and also the um, airport carbon accreditation program. So just first touching on APEX, um, as you may know, um, ICAO and ACI has recently signed a memorandum of cooperation, mm -hmm. and um, this is to enhance safety um, at airports worldwide. In the regional level, we're gonna support this um, APEX, uh, it's called Airports Excellence um, in Safety Program. In short, it's called APEX in Safety Program. So at the regional level, we support this program 100%. And uh, recently we've just done a, for our first pilot project at the Jakarta Airport um, and where experts from ACI, ICAO, as well as um, three safety partners from the region um, was involved in the safety a comprehensive review and um, it went very successfully um, and actually generated a lot of interest from other airports around the region because um, as you may know um, we've got some very different airports in, in this region. You've got some very developed ones and very ones that that are developing like uh, Jakarta Airport. So a lot of interest are being generated and at the same time, um, Airports Authority of India have signed an MOU with ACI to become a, um, a safety partner as well as hosting these, the APEX review. So in the next 12 months, we're looking at uh, supporting ACI World in around you know, five uh, APEX review with uh, Airports Authority of India. So mm -hmm. we're gonna be a very busy. Mm -hmm. And in terms of our other priority is the Airport Car Carbon Accreditation Program that we have. And this program was just recently extended um, uh, to the Asia Pacific region from ACI Europe last November. 
So just within, I would say about seven months now, we've got five airports that have been accredited. So we're very pleased with the results. And, you know, with uh, once you get critical mass, which five isn't, but hopefully, you know, more airport will, will you know, see the benefit of joining this program um, and, and their contribution to carbon uh, reduction, um, that they will come on board and hopefully in the next year or two, that we'll see a lot more airports in our region become uh, airport carbon accredited. Mm -hmm. So that basically highlights some of our priorities for, uh, for 2012 and, and going on to 2013. In aviation, we kind of look at partnership nowadays, and I think a lot of um, how we work in our region is, for example, the, the APEX program, it's sort of like a peer review. Mm -hmm. So you, as I mentioned, you've got airports as well developed in this region, like Singapore and Incheon and, and Hong Kong. Um, so we've got the big brothers who mm -hmm. would help the developing um, airports with um, the know-hows and the best practices. So we do help each other that way. And, um, and a lot of times, you know, our, at, at the ACI level, if uh, there's anything that they might need from us or in terms of training, um, then we've got the global training that's very well established and anything, um, you know, particular training that they may need. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, in terms of, in that case, you know, we've got the training from ACI World and also the peer review. Um, we've that, you know, the airports in this industry, I think they're very willing to help each other. Uh, the difficulty at the moment, uh, I think when we look at specifically to the airport business, is the fact that uh, with the sovereign debt crisis, uh, states are going to retreat for financing infrastructure projects and in particular airport projects. Mm -hmm. uh, so clearly we need, uh, certain airports need to reinvent their financing model in terms of how to finance the development of the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Uh, so clearly this, this is pushing potentially the airport business more into private financing, mm -hmm. which is fine. The problem is that because of the sovereign debt crisis at the same time, it's very difficult to access capital markets nowadays in Europe. I mean, it's certainly more difficult than it used to be. But I think what we're, you're seeing in terms of, of strategic direction for airports in Europe today is clearly under the present circumstances, a very, very strong focus on performance, mm -hmm. both operational performance and financial performance, mm -hmm. because you need to give a return to your shareholder mm -hmm. and you know still be able to access capital markets. Uh, at the same time, a strong focus on quality of service, mm -hmm. uh, and, and finally also a strong focus on social responsibility. I would say that in the present times, these are, are, are the three strategic directions that I see mm -hmm. uh, uh, among our membership. We, we act as a platform where our members can benchmark what they're doing mm -hmm. and we can show best practices. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what we've been doing with the digital report which we uh, released uh, uh, last spring. Mm -hmm. uh, this digital release really analyzes the, the trends uh, in, in, in airports using social media, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Facebook, Twitter, mobile applications and so on. Mm -hmm. and, and what you think is that there, there's a an increasing take up by airports of, of these new technologies. Mm -hmm. And it's clear that if you look at the airport experience, uh, th this is gonna be a, a great opportunity. I think these technologies plus other technologies, uh, uh, digital technologies will really re allow us to reinvent the airport experience. Mm -hmm. and, and we have the, the potential, the possibility finally to, to make the airport experience what it used to be, that is a very pleasurable experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a very interesting, there, there's going to be very interesting development in the next 10 years, clearly. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're really going to change the way people use the airport. Uh, and and there's, a, there's a very good side on it about the finances as well, because that will, these instruments will also allow us to, to extract more revenues from, from the passenger. And it's clear that if you look at the future, 
um, we, we're not going to get more revenues from the airlines, <laughs> there's mm. no way. Uh, where, where we still have a potential to get more revenues is through passengers, but not only passengers, but also visitors using the airport. I think what you're going to see also is airports trying to position themselves not only as, as a transport hub, but as, as proper economic hubs and, and uh, uh, catalysts for activities that take place on site mm -hmm. at the airport. So attracting people who don't come to the airport just to fly, but also to do other things. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this opens a new, a new door to, uh, to, to a potential of new revenues and new, uh, new activities for, for airports that will help them uh, uh, boost their uh, competitive mm -hmm. position.